It's a pleasant good day to all of my music fans across the globe. It's my pleasure once again to welcome you to this week's YouTube presentation. As usual, I, Imo Ramises Bakari, your psychologist and life coach from the magical community of Point Fourteen, located in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Southern Caribbean. My mission is to inspire you to increase your self-confidence, to inspire you to increase your self-esteem, to inspire you to develop clear thinking, and to inspire you to develop even clearer plans. And this will be done through coaching, through counseling, through teaching, through motivational speaking, feature addresses, and writing. Because you, yes you, are deserving to become the best possible version of yourself and we are prepared to partner with you in 2023 to ensure that this becomes a reality. So welcome once again and we also take the opportunity to introduce you to our motivational world. And one of the ways in which evil will flourish is when wrongs are left unattended. When people remain silent in the face of things that are wrong, they will develop into a greater difficulty, a greater problem, and it will cause greater heartache in the long run. So every one of us with a moral conscience, we must have our, take up a moral responsibility in ensuring that we take a stand against those things that are considered to be evil. So ponder on the word, reflect on the word, and let your morality guide you in terms of what you will do and what you will not do. We also take the opportunity to remind you of our services, remind you of our ongoing courses, where you can partake in a four-week course entitled The Fundamentals of Public Speaking, costing $1,200 for students and $1,800 for the general public. You can also participate in another four-week course entitled Mastering Emotional Intelligence, costing $1,800 for students and $2,500 for the general public. You can also participate in a 10-week course entitled The Fundamentals of Psychology, costing $3,800, where you can make a one-time payment, two parts, three parts, or even four parts. We are prepared to support you so that you can benefit from these courses. You can also call us and book a counseling or coaching appointment. You can also support my book conversation, costing 100 TT, 45 EC, or 15 United States dollars. There are also other books that I have by other authors, for example, The Tribute to African Civilization, costing 100 TT. You can also get a book entitled How Africa on the Develop, How Europe on the Develop Africa by Dr. Walter Rodney, costing 150 TT and another one entitled Understanding C.L.R. James by Booker Rennie, costing $140. So whether it's a book, whether it's a counseling or coaching appointment, or whether it's partaking in our ongoing courses, give us a call at 1-868-778-5141, 1-868-779-2544, or email us at leadershipwithadifference at gmail.com. So we look forward to your calls and your emails and we are ready to serve you to the best of our professional ability. So this week's topic is evil continues to flourish in the world and I would like to examine that topic, why evil continues to flourish in the world. So as I said in the motivational world, we, we have to take a, a moral stand against the things that are not right. Because we live in a world where we hear a lot of virtuous language, we hear a lot of noble language, and oftentimes the practices of individuals and institutions are contrary to those noble thoughts and deeds that they, that they ascribe to. However, I am saying that when we hear people talk about the fear of God, I just like to talk a bit about that in the context of evil. Because God is love, we have heard it. God is compassionate, God is kind, God is patient, God is non judgmental. And if God, however you define God, embodies all of those lovely sentiments, 
there is no need to fear God. However, when we think about the omnipotence, the omniscience and omnipresence of God, I am saying we can be humble before God but not fear God. Because many of the people who advocate fearing God, as I said a while ago, their behavior and actions are totally contrary to that fear of God. The greatest fear that we should have is not of God, but of man. Because man's inhumanity against man is atrocious. It's monstrous. It's highly preponderous or any other such adjective we can think of to describe man's inhumanity to man. For example, if you are a leader, whatever type of leader you are, and you are using your authority to exploit females in your organization, I consider that to be an evil act. If you are a leader of a company that is profitable, and your workers are working under inhumane conditions, and not being paid a fair wage, that, in my opinion, is an evil act. If you are a leader of a country, whether politically appointed or otherwise, and you are using state resources to benefit yourself, your families, and your friends at the expense of citizens, that to me is an evil act. And evil is all around. Yes, there are good people in the world, but all of us can attest in some form or the other as to this philosophy of evil that I consider to be the dominant philosophy in the world. Whether we look historically or we look at events currently. For example, when you think of the fact that there was something that was an experience called chattel slavery, when you think of the transatlantic slave trade, where over 42 million African persons were forcibly removed from the African continent and brought into the Americas. That development certainly undermined the development of Africa and it also was an act described as the Mahafa, meaning the most atrocious crimes ever committed against any form of humanity except define evil in its cruelest of forms. Because you had people who were viewed human beings, who were viewed as chattel, as property. You had one group of people assuming authority and dominance over another group, where families were separated, husbands and wives were separated. Uh, the wives of husbands were raped, right? The, the very strong men were used as studs to produce slaves, right? And we had nations, many of the colonial powers who were slave trading nations, such as France, Britain, the Netherlands, Spain, and Portugal. Many of these countries' wealth was built off of the actions of the transatlantic slave trade and the whole wicked institution of slavery. You had a group of people who were dehumanized in every possible way. Their culture was stripped, their language was taken away, their religious forms of expression were taken away. As I said in the beginning, we have heard about the fear of God, but did, did these individuals who subjected another group of humanity to that, those kinds of actions, did they fear God? Certainly, they flew in the face of God, but there was no fear of God, although we might have heard statements to the effect that the, the slaves, you know, they were introduced to, to different forms of religious expression. Now, I do not condemn anyone, whatever their religious persuasion is, but when they came into the Caribbean and the Americas, they did not come as Christians, and they were removed from that form of practice. I mean, when we look into the history, we have seen where uh, uh, priests were, were very prominent in, 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 the, in the slave experience. As a matter of fact, one of the slave, ship, slave ships was named Jesus. This is not to make fun of anyone's religion. So I'm saying, if man could have committed such atrocities against fellow human beings, 
evil is something that you know has caused a lot of harm. And today, the, the diaspora and the, and the descendants of the Africans who came here, they have continued to suffer psychologically, sociologically, economically, and otherwise based on those experiences. Now, we are not living in the past, but we cannot deny the effects of that evil act and its ongoing negative effects on a community of people. And I'm saying, who gave those individuals the authority to assume that dominance over another group. So we, we really need to examine evil for what it is, whether it's historically or presently. When we look at apartheid in South Africa, you had the Dutch and British settlers introducing the system of apartheid in South Africa, where the natives were made non-citizens, where many of us would have read and, and known about a past system where people who were born in a country had to have a past to go into certain communities where there were separate schools etc and today although we have had people from among the natives assuming power the plight of the, the mass of people has not changed significantly at all and the same uh, structures that existed in terms of dominance still exist and this is why when Julius Malema, the commander-in-chief of the EFF, speaks about land without any conditions attached being given to the people, he is not condemning those people who were born and worked and get land, but he is con condemning the institutionalization of a system when natives, because of that experience, are landless in their own country. And that could never be right. And I really want to commend him for constantly bringing it to the fore, not because he's against others, as he always said, he, he doesn't hate anyone for seeking the rights of the African community. So I'm saying evil in all of these forms, you know, has caused a lot of damage to humanity. We look at today and we witness the, the events on the African continent. I mean, when we look into history, the Berlin Conference in 1884, when the Western nations came together, and divided up Africa among themselves with no consideration for the development of Africa and the people who inhabit Africa. And then we also have the phenomena of complicit leaders who would have benefited personally supporting the, the unfair, the unjust, unjust and evil actions of these powers where countries that are rich beyond measure in terms of their natural resources and fundamentally, they are poor. You have France, which has been very much in the news today in terms of former French colonies, you know, you know, asserting themselves and saying enough is enough. Where you have a situation, according to Dr. Arikana Chimburi, former AU ambassador to the United States, indicating that France extracts $500 billion from former African colonies where they sign arrangements where money, 85% of their foreign reserves are stored in the Central Bank of France. They are allowed to keep 15% and then they have to borrow loans from the, their own money at commercial rates. I mean, in my estimation, that is evil in, its, in full force, right? So today when, the person, when, when individuals, whether it's through the military or otherwise, take a stand, they, some of these nations are talking about democracy. But is democracy denying people of their God-given uh, minerals that benefit their own citizens? Is democracy having uh, fake elections where people sometimes not true uh, the, the full legitimacy in terms of the fairness of the electoral process are elected to serve? Or if it is con contrived in such a way where they serve and they are benefiting themselves, that certainly cannot be something that is decent. In my view, that is very much an evil activity. And I'm saying evil in any form is to the detriment of the mass of humanity. And we, as citizens, wherever we are located in the world, it is our responsibility. We may not be in power, but wherever we are, let us set an example of doing what is right. And what is right should benefit every one of us. If we are truly children of God, 
And if we are to benefit from the things that God has provided to us, nations that are thousands of miles away from other parts of the world, for example, the European nation, France, etc., they are located thousands and thousands of miles away from these nations, yet their countries and their citizens are benefiting from the resources of another part of the world. How in heaven's name could that be just? How that could be right in any form? And how can people now be criticized for taking a stand against such atrocities? So my message to you citing those examples, whether it was in the past or whether it is presently, every one of us with a social conscience, every one of us with a sense of justice for the welfare of humanity, let us do what is right. Let us take a stand and play a part, because if we do not play a part, the evil that befalls us, we will have contributed to it. So evil is not good for the human race, but we are seeing it all over the world in all forms and fashion. The, 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 the millions of unemployed people, the people who are struggling to survive because of unfair wages, you know, the people who are uh, subjecting themselves to the harshest of conditions in terms of eking out a living, that could never be fair or just in any way. So my message to all who are listening and viewing, let us really, really, really do and be our brothers and sisters keepers. Let us have a heart of God and exemplify the qualities of godliness rather than being fearful. Once we talk in God, as I said in the, in the, in the motivational world, there is no need to fear God because fearing God and doing evil is a greater evil. So let us be kind, let us be considerate, let us be fair, and let us ensure that everyone has a fair chance to benefit and to develop to the fullest of their capacity. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for viewing. I remind you to support our services, our ongoing courses, purchase our books, call and book a counseling or coaching appointment. All you've got to do is give us a call at one 786 1-866-877-7844 or email us at leadershipwithadifference at gmail.com. So to make a dent against evil, take a stand, take a moral stand, and play a part. It is your God-given responsibility to do such. So I thank you once again, and stay tuned for another powerful presentation.